Hello, folks, and welcome to Write the Docs episode 26. It's uh, the Christmas edition 2019, the, clo- the closing show of the decade, um, this, uh, this particular uh, episode is, so it's very exciting. I hope you're all having a, um, a good festive season if you celebrate festive season, uh, or a good break if you're up to break time um, in uh, the holiday season. So uh, it's going to be a pretty packed show today, I think. It's lots of stuff to talk about. So um, uh, I'll introduce our regular panelists, of which we have one and potentially two joining us at the end of the show, depending on Chris gets back on his flight from his flight. So uh, first of all, we'll welcome Tom Johnson to the show. Hello, Tom. Hi, Jared. How are you doing? It's fun to be on the show again, and uh, I'm excited for this topic. I think this is this is something that hasn't really been discussed much, and I'm, I'm uh, hopeful that it's going to be a, a, a good, juicy discussion. Yeah, I, I do too. I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, what's happening in your world at the moment of technical writing? Well... As the year sort of winds down, we enter blackout periods at work where nobody can really release anything, and uh, basically it, it it gets a little slower. Uh, so it's kind of nice, actually, get around to some of these things that I've been putting off, uh, doing some upgrades and other stuff, uh, preparing for an upcoming workshop in January 23 with API, API documentation in L.A., and uh, let's see. Not, nothing else really. Going down to Red River for a for a winter vacation uh, in Albuquerque area. In Albuquerque. New, yeah, New Mexico area. Uh, nice. it's, it's not in Albuquerque, but anyway, so not a whole lot. Well, that sounds all right. It's a little bit like that. The This time of year, it does slow down, particularly because in Australia we have um, essentially what the Americans would call summer break here. Um, and that runs from pretty much old school shut down. They have seven weeks off and it's, it's over Christmas. So it works out well. So everything kind of starts winding down, uh, at this time of year for us too. And, uh, yeah, it's certainly the case, you know, where, well, I think squiz shuts down for two weeks. Uh, so it's like everyone takes definitely two weeks off and if they've got any more leave, they'll take more weeks off so they can be with their family over the holidays. So it's, it's a good time of year. It's, um, sort of reconnecting with family. Well, especially um, working for Amazon, right? People don't want to release any kind of major updates that's going to break the site because so much shopping is done in this period. So, oh yeah. So that's why why it's like, well, we can't release anything anyway. So you know, you can just yeah. continue on your other projects. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. That sounds very similar to at uh, racing carnival time of year uh for Ladbrokes it's like everything just stopped there was like a code freeze like a month out before <laughs> everything so so the site wouldn't break <laughs> yeah well look that's good thanks for the update there Tom now um we wouldn't be a show without a special guest and we certainly have one today uh I'd like to welcome to the show uh Alan Bowman hello Alan uh, hi guys nice to be here thank you for inviting me for this oh yeah most welcome thanks for coming along and chatting to us today um, so, Alan, um, before the show, in, in our warm-up, we were, I was asking you how do you describe yourself, and uh, I think it's probably best coming from your mouth. How would you describe your, what you do, Alan? Okay, yeah. I'm the lone technical writer for a company you've never heard of in an industry you do not know even exists, but if you're in the U.S., you are probably a customer of one of our customers. We make uh, essentially business process automation software is what we do. Oh, there you go. That sounds very cryptic and also very interesting. <laughs> it, it's actually before I took the job, I had I had no idea that this type of work even existed or that this type of company even existed. And now uh, it's it is it's actually kind of interesting. We're pretty much the only company that does what we do in the industry we're in. So it's kind of fun to be on the very edge of that. It's a lot of you know interesting stuff to learn about. That's cool. It's always good to have something that, uh, you know, gets you coming back into work every day because it's actually interesting and you're engaged by it. So that's really cool. It is true. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So we're, we're not talking about uh, the, the, your business as such today that we, that we don't know but probably use, but we're, <laughs> we're actually talking about something else that uh, you're very passionate about, uh, and that is uh, the, the technical writing subreddit. Um, uh, and uh, all the fun that goes along with that. Well, how about you give us a bit of background on how you got involved with that? I 
I was on Reddit. Uh, you know, I've been on Reddit for a while now. And after I started working as a tech writer for a few years, I was like, you know, there's a Reddit for everything. There's mm-hmm. got to be, a, there has to be a Reddit for this. So I started looking around and sure enough, there is one. Uh, so I just kind of, I probably lurked for a good bit at the beginning. And eventually I just sort of started, you know, oh, I can answer that question. I know, I, I know a little bit about that. I've done that kind of thing before. And it's kind of, I won't say snowballed, but I do tend to, when I have the time, I do tend to answer, I guess, a fair amount of questions on there, you know, to try to help as best I can. I think we should back up a, just a little bit and introduce more of what what this subreddit is. Uh, for people who may not even be familiar with Reddit at all, uh, you know, what is Reddit and exactly what is a subreddit forum or sub forum on Reddit and and what is the technical writing forum all about there? Do you want to give us some highlights on on just those basic questions? For Reddit, it's I think it's the I had some data on this. I in a my summer class, uh, a social media class. I think it's I forget the size of the of the website. It's a fairly one of the larger sites on the internet. Uh, I can tell you demographically because I had to look this up. Um, it's you know sixty nine percent of the redditors are male, uh, and about and about half of Americans from twenty five to thirty four have been on the site. It's basically uh, text and images. You can post a comment, ask a question. People will come back and you know answer your question, have another comment. You can post videos. You can post links to all other types of content. It can be kind of a free for all. Uh, my advice to people always with Reddit is uh, if you're going to spend any time on it, create a login, you know, create an account and set your, what you see to be the things that you're interested in, because there's a lot of stuff on Reddit that really isn't that nice. Uh, and there are some <laughs> not nice people who spend time there, and I don't really have the time to uh, fight through that. So when I go on, when I log into Reddit, I see the things I'm interested in, and there's some of the best communities online that are on Reddit. There, that's kind of where people have gravitated to, and there's a lot of crap on Reddit. Uh, so you kind of need to pick and choose and be willing to see what you want to see on Reddit. And, and you had mentioned about subreddits. Basically, you know, Reddit is the main site and subreddits are sort of sub sites, not quite maybe just sub discussion boards. Like I said, you know, we mentioned there's a technical writing one. Uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. There's one specific to Atlanta, which actually gives me better local news than any of the local news channels or their websites do. Uh, huh. It's it's sad but true. It's a it's a if I if I need to know a breaking bit of local news, I'm going to find it on Reddit or I'm going to uh, on the Atlanta Reddit, and it's going to have some pretty good inf- you know decent information to it. Uh, there's I read a lot of manga. Uh, probably the best manga community I, I've found is the manga subreddit. Same with anime. I watch a lot of anime. The anime subreddit is huge. Uh, I used to. Trying to think of some of the other ones I don't say frequent, but I'm also let's see, let me take a quick, quick click. Um, yeah, I, you know, the, you know, local stuff. It's really, it's got really good. I think the term people like to use is hyper local news. Uh, it's got really good with that, uh, and just any kind of weird sub interest you might have, you can probably find that community on Reddit. I remember I actually discovered Reddit about seven years ago, and my introduction to it was uh, actually the Ex Mormon subreddit forum, which is one of oh. the most popular. It's one of the most popular sites uh, for, oh, right. for Ex Mormons, and it's it thrives on Reddit. Um, but at that time, we, we were leaving the Mormon Church, and all of a sudden, we found this community that, like everybody else, who is uh, upset, dissatisfied, just like wanted to share and 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 i don't know get advice support it, it, it really has an active form so that sort of drew me in but then a lot of times reddit does become a, a way to sort of <clears throat> escape and and just be distracted by the bizarre and the quirky like uh, there's a forum called what could go wrong 
And uh, <laughs> this is where people do dumb things. You know, like they're going to end up hurting themselves. Uh, you know, a man's going to jump between like across a ravine Civilians. or something, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, what could go wrong with that idea? And of course, he's like going to maim himself. But um, they, they do have a tag to kind of warn people about more extreme things. The the NSFW, not safe for work. Not safe right? for work. So yes. so if you're if you're clicking on Reddit at work and you see one of those tags, you might want to skip that post. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just maybe keep that one for when you're on the train on the way home. One of the ones it was like, at, it was actually mentioned to me on the Write the Dog Slack uh, because I posted. I joked once about how, to me, all programming, like learn learn how to program instruction stuff, is basically, it's the thing where you know draw you know draw an owl, draw two circles, <laughs> and then draw the rest of the f and owl. Well, yeah. there's a, there's an actual subreddit called rest of the owl, and it's hysterically funny, and it's kind of interesting as a, someone who has to communicate complicated things for a living, to look at some of this and go, huh. Yeah, okay. I can see exactly why, you know, stepping back and looking at it, you know, why the person who brought this, you know, why the person who did this probably thought to themselves, this is Enough. perfect. This is great. <laughs> and whereas someone who doesn't know it is looking at it going, what in the hell is this? So I kind of, I actually rather like that one. It's kind of interesting to, to read through. Jeez, I had to go back through the uh, the, the subreddits um, on this uh, particular podcast because there's so many juicy ones that I need to subscribe to, I reckon. And that's the problem with Reddit too, because it's so huge. And if you're new to Reddit, and I, I was in this very position last year when I decided to take the plunge and jump into Reddit. When you first join Reddit, it is just like going into a... a a mega metropolis, essentially. You just walk in the front door and you go, whoa! <laughs> and I think it's very tempting just to walk straight back out again sometimes because there's just no real organization to it. It just seems like a big, like crazy, almost like bazaar of information that you can it, subscribe to. Well, it bills itself as the front page of the internet. Yes. And which makes it, and looking, I found, I finally found the thought I was looking for. Uh, according to Alexa rankings, Reddit is the 16th most pop most popular site on the internet, and the fifth most popular site in the U.S. Wow, so, that's huge! It it really is huge. And again, like I said, I I tend to interact with like a, a you know a small sub section of subreddits. I, I drink a lot. I'm a I'm a big tea drinker. Uh, there's a tea right. subreddit. I spent a lot of years using the Vim text editor. There's a really good Vim subreddit. I use Pretty Git. Much. Every, yeah, I use Git every day. There's a fantastic Git subreddit. I mean, it's if essentially it's nerd, if you can think of it, it's yeah, on it's, the it's on Reddit. <laughs> if it's nerdy or nerd adjacent, it's there. It's Reddit. Yep. I, I well, think there you there's, go. There's, go, I, go ahead. Tom, I was going to mention one more quirky Reddit <laughs> subform. I don't, I don't even know which one this is, but it's it's something like what's wrong with me and and people post like their their symptoms <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then really? and then others chime in and explain, you know, you, you might have this. And sometimes like uh, I, I, I sort of clued into this when I was trying to figure out something that was wrong with my back, like, you know, there's a bulging disc, what? And all of a sudden, like these people post really bizarre symptoms. It's, it's almost just entertaining to see. It's it's sad to say that. But yeah, it's a. Uh, fun hey but but let's focus on the on the technical okay. writing subreddit because um okay. I, I the reason i wanted to do this topic is because there are a lot of spaces on the internet where people well, actually there are not many spaces there are a few places people go to interact online and of course write the docs slack is probably the most uh the, the most lively and, and frequent yeah. discussion for technical writers. But, but this is also a space that's pretty, pretty popular. I see at least uh, there's like a few new posts a day in that subreddit. And, and it's a little different from other spaces because you have more, tra you have more anonymity. Uh, you, you don't really know who's posting. And because of that anonymity, it lends itself to a different flavor of discussion. People can sort of, um, share in a more uh, um, open way. way without, mm. you know, making themselves vulnerable. Whereas with Write the Doc Slack, if you come out and say, 
I'm overwhelmed. I, I don't know if I'm, you know, cut out to be a technical writer. If I posted this, oh, man, I feel like, uh, I, I don't know, it, it wouldn't be, <laughs> I'd be hearing a lot of feedback and that I didn't want, right? Um, yeah. So I'm curious to know what you think, uh, Alan, Jared, about this anonymous element to this uh, subreddit that makes it different. Is it, is it, uh, how does that contribute to the sort of flavor of the discussions there? I think a little bit the anonymous part is in some senses a secondary effect. I think people, they sign up to Reddit with, you know, their own particular username, whatever it was when they started and they just happen to post on this subreddit and it turns out they're kind of anonymous. If you really start looking at people's profiles, you can usually get a pretty good sense of who and or where they are. So, I mean, as a friend of mine likes to say, you know, you're only one, uh, one court order away from, not being anonymous online anymore. So <laughs> that's quite uh, true. <laughs> so that, but I do think it lets some people, uh, well, kind of like you mentioned, they can, they're able to bring up things, especially things about, you know, I'm having a hard time with this. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, that kind of thing. That's probably easier to say if in a space where, you know, I, do, you know, people, other people don't re, may really not know who you are. I don't know uh, some of the uh, recent comments. I know I think I think I've commented on from people. Yeah, you know, I couldn't tell you other than some general information, anything about the person. So, you know, it makes uh, maybe it makes me comment in a little more, I won't say generic way, but I you know I yeah you know, without knowing a lot of specifics. I have to, you know, my answer has to be a little more um, generalized, I generalized, guess. yeah, than it is a specific thing. I don't know. I think, uh, like, if we compare, and it's, it's probably inaccurate to compare Reddit with uh, Write the Dog Slack, very inaccurate. But um, I think if we look at the conversations that sometimes happen in Write the Dog Slack, um, you do that. There are channels like Lone Writer, and you know, I do see some folks in there occasionally, you know, posting that, oh, well, you know really struggling with this aspect of being a lone writer, you know, what should I do? So uh, I think in, in write the doc slack, I think anonymity isn't quite as pronounced as what it would be on Reddit. Like I think people often use their real names or, you know, like me, a common name they use on the internet where you can easily find me. I'm definitely like half a court order away from, <laughs> from being found on the internet. I'm very open. Um, and I think you actually chose to use your full name as well uh, on Reddit, didn't you? Uh, Ellen. I do. Yeah. I know uh, one of the questions about that in part, I guess the easiest way to, you know, I got over my talk a bunch of crap on the internet anonymously stuff back in, you know, the early mid nineties on slash dot on Usenet, on various forums, you know, that was, you know, you know, what's the, you know, someone's, you know, the, I don't know what the XKCD one, but you know, someone is wrong on the internet you know, I just, you know, I, I was, you know, I had to rail against somebody being wrong on the internet. And now mm. I just don't care. Um, <laughs> and that's, and that's one of those things where, um, Tom, I saw the question about this and it really kind of made me step back and think a little bit about it. And part of it is, you know, if, you know, my phone, you know, using my name, you know, one thing that keeps me honest, mm. uh, like I said, I don't really, most of the I work with, I'm 55, and I work with a bunch of kids who are in their 20s and 30s. I remember talking to one of the other day, and I made something about, you know, do you need change for that? And he's like, cash? What are you talking <laughs> about? So, you know, and then I realized that you know, he turned, he was born the year I turned 30. So it was one of those things where, yeah, so I was like, oh, it's a different world. And I know all those kids are on Reddit, uh, and they're various, all the things they're interested in. So... I know that if anyone looked, it's not that hard to find me. So I'm not going to say anything online that, you know, I wouldn't say, like, if I say something about my employer, trust me, my employer knows I said that because I said it to them. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's one of those things where it also forces me to be a bit mindful about what I'm posting. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can't really just kind of, Oh, you stupid moron! What the hell were you thinking? Uh, why did you do that? You were an idiot to do that. You know, don't ever kind of you know, you're a tech writer. You should know better. That that doesn't a that doesn't do anybody any good, and b you know that that's 
doesn't help. Well, like it doesn't help anyone anywhere. That's right. And so I have, you know, I'm a little, you know, it makes me okay when I when I hit post or comment, you know, it it, it you know to a degree points back to me and my reputation. So well, I'm mindful yeah, about that whole thing. What you do you reckon what? about anonymity, Tom? Do you prefer to be out in the open or a little bit, uh, well, a little bit hidden? I, I, there's a podcast I, I often listen to this week in tech with Leo Laporte. And this topic seems to come up a lot. Um, the sense that like the internet has sort of, um, given people the ability to bully others and to just not be their best selves online. Mm. Uh, you know, hate tweets and other things. And, um, I, I, on the other hand, uh, so, so there's like a bad part of being anonymous on the other hand, like this ex-Mormon subreddit I was mentioning, it really gives people a space and a voice to kind of share things that otherwise they, they might not have a, a place to share. Now, with technical writing, it's not such a salacious topic that like there's a, a tech writers anonymous sort of group, right? It's like, it's, <laughs> it, I mean, the most... I was kind of looking at trends and seeing, well, what are the, what are these most uh, taboo topics that go on? And here, here are a few, like we already mentioned one, I'm overwhelmed, you know, help. I, 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 I can't figure this out. You know, I don't know if I'm cut out to be a tech writer. So, so much, you know, work is being asked of me. It's so technical. People don't listen to me. There's that, that overwhelm post. There's a post where it's the salary post. Like, is this a good salary? Uh, you know, is this right? Am I underpaid? Am I, is this like a sweet deal? Uh, how do I find out? you know, what, what I should expect for a salary. Uh, that one is so common that people pinned, pinned a salary, read this post at the top. Uh, another common one is, um, our master's programs or certificate programs or tech writer programs. Are these worth it? Is this just all a waste of time? Is this going to help me get a job? I um, commented on one of those today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to return to that one right, right now. Not, not the post Maybe you commented on just that topic here. Uh, and then a, a fourth one, um, some people are like, I can't find a job anywhere. Is this, is this feel dead? You know, this is, this is the sort of <laughs> desperation. Just, uh, it's like, yeah, right. I've been looking for six months, you know, at my wits end, about to, you know, go to some other field and blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah. let's look at, okay, let's look at the master's program one, because I know Alan, uh, you were, you mentioned, previously that you're actually in a master's program mm -hmm, correct now if somebody says our master's program's worth it and let's say i don't know what your position is but let's say hypothetically that you're against it right but now if you come out and say oh master's programs are a waste of time i'm in one right now and i wish i hadn't enrolled well that is is going to be potentially uh have some might have some backlash right if your your mm -hmm. teachers come on they're like oh What's wrong with Alan? He hates this program. But if you if you're anonymous and you generalize things, then maybe you can have a more authentic discussion. What do you think of that? I think that's probably true. Uh, I think though that, well, I guess to to make you know so it's clear in those posts, you know, when people say, you know, do you know do I have to have a master's degree to get into the field? You know, my answer is always no. It's all and it's always been no. Uh, and I've always said, because, you know, until you've done this job for, you know, four or five years, you really don't know what you're getting into. So <laughs> don't spend the money on an advanced degree, especially a specialized advanced degree before you've actually been able to sit down and go, you know what, this is the field for me. And I think I'm going to move up ahead in this field. So now I'm going to get the education. And I'm always in the post that's probably near the top of the subreddit right now. I say in there, you know, full disclosure, you know, I'm currently in a master's program, but you know, I had well over a decade of experience as a technical writer and understood what I was doing and what I was getting into, you know, before I even contemplated the program. And I think even to say this one, I'm like, do I need the masters? I do not. You know, it's not, it's, but, you know, am I at a place in my life right now where I have the time and the ability to get that extra credential? Yeah, I am. So, you know, I figured I might as well, you know, I'm not getting any younger, so let's go with it. You know, but it's, but again, yeah, I mean, I would never, 
but yeah, you're right. I would, I would self censor. I really, you know, if I didn't, if I had bad feelings about the program I'm in, I doubt I would say that on the subreddit. Mm. So that might be, or then again, I don't know. I'm, I can be enough of a pain in the butt that I might. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to get it out there and yeah. start the Discord. That's true, but but it's I, but but again, I don't think it's. But whereas if I was anonymous, you have I mean you have a very good point. If I was anonymous or had a throwaway account there, then I would probably be able to come in and say, you know, yeah, I don't like this. This is what's going wrong with the program. It could be different. And yeah, I believe you know from talking to them that my instructors are at least somewhat familiar with Reddit, so they probably would be able to find it or find me fairly easily on there. Do you know it's an I, interesting point? And oh, actually. No, you go first, Tom, because I'll bring this up after you've uh, had your question there. Folk, I was just going to mention. I, I just going to mention that I I, I have another uh, former uh, colleague or friend who's in a program, and he was telling me that he had like he really had negative experiences in his program, and I and I kind of wanted him to do like a a post about it, <laughs> but he was like, no way, no way, like he'd burn every single bridge. They'd, <laughs> They'd know exactly who he was, and he's like, "I'm not ready for that. Give me a few years after I graduate." So, there's definitely like, there's definitely a, a, an area where people don't necessarily express what they really would for fear of being identified. You flip that around though, and it all depends on how you deliver the message, so right? On on any online forum, and you know, being technical writers, we do have a way with words. So you know, you can still give feedback about a program you're not liking or or something like that, as long as you're constructive about it. And you may very, very well find that if the instructors are online and reading it, that'll actually start a really healthy discord as well. Um, but, you know, if you go out there and, and rage and just pick holes in in something, yeah, of course it's going to rub people up the wrong way. But, you know, sometimes that's what people want, <laughs> particularly <laughs> on Reddit. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of um, the, I guess, Reddit and sort of like the types of posts we on there, how about we look at the types of experience that you see on reddit what do you alan what do you reckon the, the the main demographic on the technical writing subreddit tends to be do you think it's um new folks or do you think it's more experienced technical writers i think it's generally new folks who are posting things questions uh what about this what about that but i think if you start to read through the comments you do see a lot of people with a lot of experience commenting uh, so I think that's kind of where you see the more experienced writers. There are there are some people who have you know who post you know some tool specific stuff that's pretty interesting. Uh, more more experienced people. I've posted a few things I found recently that I thought would be of of use to both experienced and new people. Uh, what was it the the I think it was what's it not might have been Digital Ocean the one of the uh, the like a big doc sprint, an open source doc sprint that was going on uh, a oh, couple yeah. a couple months ago that I posted about that. What was it? The uh, Hacktoberfest. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I put that on there. And then there was a really interesting post a while, uh, not long ago uh, from a guy who, from a Python shop about what nobody tells you about documentation that I think I got from Hacker News. And, That's um, Danielle's. Um post the, on PyCon Australia. I believe, yeah, I, yeah, that sounds correct. Yes. The, the four different types of documentation. Yeah. yeah that, that's, that, was, uh, that, that was really, really, I really enjoyed reading through that. Yeah. I've, I've used that post. Uh, I've used that video a number of times in a number of ways. <laughs> so he really hit, he resonated with me as well. So yeah, that sounds good. So yeah, I mean, but, information goes. but yeah, I mean, but like I, said, I, I think a lot of, again, because of the demographic of Reddit is so much younger. You know, it's mm. 25 to 34 is their general main demographic. I think it's people on the tech writing forum, you know, I'm, I'm in college. I'm, I want to be a tech writer. You know, what do I do? I just found out that this profession existed. How do I get into it? Uh, and I think that does kind of dominate the, you know, the posting on there. But again, like I said, I think a lot of the comments – in the comments, you will you will often find a lot of more experienced people replying in, you know, you know, this is what I've seen, this is how I think it should work, that kind of thing. 
So essentially, all the senior, all the older or more experienced technical writers just sleeper agents waiting to be activated by the right question. Yes, I like that. <laughs> that that sounds far much, far much, far more exciting than saying that I was sitting around at home bored, and that looked kind of interesting. So you know, I decided and sleeper to get, agents. I like get, sleeper. Get that on a shirt. Get that, that on a shirt. I like that so much better. <laughs> You know, I, I, I do see that that same uh, post over and over, like, how do I break into technical writing? Or, you know, I'm as you said, the college person who's majoring in something and now they're they want to get into tech writing and they just don't know. And I actually get a ton of email about this from people visiting my site as well. They're like, hey, can you suggest how I you know get a job in this field and what training do I need and how do I what tools do I need and what's the best way? And I'm, I just get tired of these because it's like, I feel as if people are posting this question, having done zero research, you know, just like expect somebody to step in, hold their hand and give them a simple formula. So, so mm. that sort of post actually, uh, I've just heard so many times that, that, uh, I roll my eyes. I, that does really frustrate me too. I mean, I will, I, I cannot disagree with you on that. So yes. I'll I'll think think the, yay. <laughs> but there, there is another category post that I do think has more merit. Um, and that's the, the technical writer who uh, a lot of times their first job, they suddenly have to evaluate a salary. And in this field in particular, there's a lot of variation about salary. You, you could end up uh, working in some kind of content farm doing, quote, technical writing when really you're, 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 you're not really doing mainstream tech writing you're doing some sub genre and being paid like 15 bucks an hour right at mm -hmm. the same time you could you could have an offer uh for you know 150k a year and exactly. people are um really it's a it's a hard topic the salary one because on the one hand like yes people need to know like how do you know if the salary is right you're going to be working at that job for years and if you go in lowballed you're kind of stuck. Um, mm. and, and yeah, there are sites like Glassdoor and others, Payscale, that can give you an approximation, but still you never quite know. On the other hand, the salary question is really frustrating and upsets a lot of people because people seem to to not understand that, that a job for like an entry-level technical writer in, say, Florida versus a job for a, a senior technical writer in Silicon Valley is going to be polar opposites with sal yeah. salary. Yeah. So somebody who says, oh, you know, I, somebody posted recently, they said, I just saw that the average salary of a technical writer was fifty to $70,000 a year. Is that true? That sounds too good to be true. And I'm thinking, yeah, if I took a job for $50,000 a year, I would be like homeless. That's that's like yeah. sub, sub, yeah. sub poverty in this area. Yeah, in California. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's true. I, I really don't. The salary questions without context like that I think are really hard because yeah. I was out at Mad World in San Diego. I've used Mad Cat Flare for work. So I was, I was out at Mad World in San Diego and I was talking to uh, a person who works in Palo Alto. Uh, mm -hmm. I, for, I forget where they work. Uh, it wasn't any of the big companies, but it was a, a company I'd heard of. And through our conversation, it came out that, you know, they made a little more than twice my salary, but right. their cost of living was close to three times what I, what I have. So wow. it's really, it's hard to come back and say, you know, that's a good salary because that, you know, you need to know. You know, like in, I know here in Atlanta that my salary in Atlanta, this is a major metropolitan area, does not compare to the salary you know that Tom makes in Silicon Valley. Even though we may have similar jobs, it's a completely different place to be. Yeah. So, and I was looking. I have a friend who lives in Huntsville, Alabama, and I was looking at job postings at where they work. Uh, they had a senior technical writer job open at twenty grand a year less than what I make in Atlanta, only one state away. You know, in Huntsville. So. I'm like, so it's really, you know, is Atlanta twenty thousand dollars a year cheaper than you know Atlanta? Atlanta is, you know, Alabama is. Uh oh, uh oh. Where, where did that there we go? go. Okay, there we go. Back yeah. again. As you know, I reckon there in in those questions that yeah are always asked like salary, what's a good salary? I reckon we could actually solve this with technical writing in subreddits. You know, why don't we actually say, here's a template you use to ask your cellular question. Oh, that would, <laughs> and then, that would be good. 
Yeah. yeah. And just have it pinned up to the top and then go, all right, so this is how you ask a salary question. And if you don't want to get flamed, this is how to ask a salary question. Uh, I, I, I see those. I've seen that. I think uh, on our Vim, they post every now and then a little thing about here's how to ask a good question in yeah. in the Vim subreddit. Uh, so, yeah, that might be actually kind of. It's just it, it's question yeah. asking quality of life for everyone who's a, a long time redditor, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What one resource that I totally want to mention when it comes to the salary that I think anybody who's trying to f figure out if like a salary is on target is uh, the STC salary database, which unfortunately you have to be a member to get access to. But it breaks down like which area and then puts uh, average salaries in terms of like 25 percentile, 50 percentile and so forth. 75 percentile. I saw when I uh, uh, in a previous job, I, I brought that salary database in as I was negotiating a salary and, and, and had total leverage to negotiate like 10K more than I, I normally would have. Right. Um, but but even like here's another dimension to the salary beyond location. Let's say that a person says, look, I got an offer for uh, 100K at a place. Right. There are also like other considerations with signing bonuses uh, stock options, annual yeah. bonuses, other sort of perks, like that makes it really difficult to sort of evaluate because 100K with no annual bonus, no stock, nothing else doesn't compare to something that, that, that does have a lot. And so uh, when people are just like, hey, uh, I see this job, it pays 70K. Is that good? It's like, uh, you what know. What do you get? <laughs> What's on the table? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah do you get your full one, tuition? Right? Do you get, you know, what are your, you know, how much of the, how much do your benefits come out of your uh, paycheck? It, it's definitely a lot of, there's a lot of back and forth on that. So um, I guess um, moving on with the, the set of questions we got, um, I'm wondering about um, if there's a post on there that particularly resonates with you that was really frustrating for you, what really ground your gears on Reddit that day? Can you think of one? I can't go back maybe to like a specific post, but kind of going back to what Tom had said uh, a while back, six, eight months ago, um, there was finally a post that was sticky to the top of the subreddit that for a, a year or more, literally there would be like a post and then a different post and then a post and, uh, and all these posts were, you know, OMG, I want to be a tech writer, LOL. How do I be a tech writer? What do I do? <laughs> LOL. Uh, yeah. So incredibly evaluating posts. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and really, I mean, those would be, I think one of them I actually kind of like nastily posted something effective, you know, this is the 13th post asking this exact same question in the last 48 hours. You know, could you not search? If you want to be a tech writer, research is what you're going to spend the rest of your career doing. If you can't do that here, go do something else because this is not going to be the job for you. And those, I mean, it just really, really frustrated me because, like, you know, it's like it's called a search function. Use it. It's not that hard. So that those are those are the ones that frustrate me. So. Do you find that like if you does does Reddit search actually work well, or is it just like again an overwhelming dump of information when you get the results back? How do you, you find have, that? Uh, it's when I've used Reddit search, I, I sometimes I will have to sort of like search, um, like again, sort it a different way. But again, mm. that's kind of what technical writers do. You learn to search and sort things and kind of keep looking sure. until you find what you want. So I guess I, I, guess I even have kind of less um, uh, empathy for that kind of post. And I have even less now that the really, really well done, incredibly detailed sticky post at the top that breaks us down into really amazing detail is there and has been there. And you can just tell when someone just blew right past it and didn't yep. even bother to look. Is it just because there's too many stickies? So that's there's sometimes only, that's a problem. There's only two. Oh, that's there's fine. Only, yeah, there's, there's no excuse. Two. Yeah. RT, RTFM, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I have ahead. to say oh. that, like, comparing these two spaces, uh, the the subreddit forum versus, like, write the docs Slack, 
I think that the write the doc Slack, you're going to get a higher quality of exchange because it has it mm. allows this back and forth, you know, whereas whereas the the Reddit so space really, really doesn't, <laughs> right? The only thing yeah. that and and you get higher professionals. Like if I really have a question about something, I'll probably go to write the doc Slack and either post it in a in a channel. Or I'll just ping somebody privately and DM them. Mm. You know, I've I've asked people that before. I'm like, hey, tell me this, uh, and, and and people people like to share that way. Um, I almost I almost go to the the Reddit forum almost more for entertainment than anything else. But um, <laughs> it, it it is weird though that like we keep getting these same same questions about like from the newbie technical writers. How do I how do I get started? And I, I don't understand, like, I part of our profession, I guess, is kind of hard to get started. Like, getting your first tech writing job is actually quite difficult, right? You have to, even your first API doc writer job after you've been a tech writer for many years is hard. Mm. And um, I think that's part of what attracts so many people to, to ask that. Because even if you know the general steps, still unclear, Um and I, I get this it's accidental, right? Like some people yeah. fall into technical writing. I know that was a case for me back in the day. I went, oh, okay, I'm a technical writer now. Okay, sure. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, so yeah, it's, it's tricky. Hey, Tom, what do you reckon about um, on? Because uh, you, you seem to be more of a, a user uh, of Reddit than I do at the moment. Something I'm going to be changing after this podcast. But um, what do you think? Um, as far as transparency um, uh, and I guess like the people's ability to tell it like it is in write the docs versus Reddit, what do you, cause we're, we're users of both. What do you, what do you reckon the balance is between that? Do you think people are more inclined to be a little bit more, uh, I guess, truthful or candid on write the docs because of the, uh, the slack monster eating the back, the, the scroll back or, because Reddit's there forever, isn't it? Like it's it doesn't go away. You're right. That's an interesting comparison, right? In Slack, that every month the the threads disappear, which frustrates the heck out of me. Because yeah, me too. You get the same questions, and it's like, oh, they're gonna have to do the same conversation over. And and yeah, I get that. Like knowing that your your conversation is not there forever is kind of like it helps engender the conversation, so that people. People know that they're not going to say something that's going to live forever online. But uh, personally, I, I'm actually kind of uh, part of me is afraid about posting on Twitter or Reddit or even write the doc Slack that I'm going to say something that I'll regret. And mm. and and because uh, all it takes is like one poorly thought tweet and you could you could end your job like you could completely lose your job versus yeah, the benefits yeah. benefits of, let's say, posting on Twitter like you don't really gain a whole lot, right? You sort of gain, mm. you, you build connections with people maybe that you kind of quasi know. Uh, yeah, but They're more but acquaintances yeah. rather than real deep relationships usually on, on Twitter. So, um, so, so personally, I think uh, one reason the Reddit is the Reddit forum attracts more like younger people is because maybe younger people are less inhibited and older mm. people kind of realize that, uh, if you post something, people are going to know who you are. And so you shouldn't ever post something that you don't really want to be identified with. And so the whole idea of anonymity is sort of an illusion. Whereas maybe the younger generation is like, yeah, I just don't care. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Do you ever do you ever fear that you're going to you know, post something that then gets you in trouble? Well, I, I tend to do the good thing about being on online and particularly things like a written mediums is you can you can do that uh rage post and then not send it and then re-edit it so it's not a rage post again <laughs> which i find myself doing quite often recently because i'm curmudgeon now being over 40 but um you know i think that there's there's a lot to be said about um having a like a that, that sort of asynchronous ability on, on things like reddit because you can self-filter and you can you can always twist something negative around to sound positive and measured um, so I, I'm not really super paranoid about saying something I'd regret because um, if, if it's something that turns out to be something that's that if, makes someone feel uncomfortable, um, it's more of a case of, well, look, I thought about that enough before I posted it. So therefore, I was conscious that I was posting it. And therefore, what what it is is what it is. If it's just me being being 
it's me after being self-edited out on the internet. So yeah. from that perspective, it's like, well, it, it is, it is what it is. Like I, it's, if people don't like it, then that's, that's their problem. Uh, it, it is what, it's how I'm feeling at the moment, or it, it is the facts as I see them. And therefore let's have a discord about them and work out why you don't like it. So, you know, uh, it's I, sort of the way I feel about it. I probably self filter more than I acknowledge. Like, uh, mm. For example, tools, right? I have sort of consciously stayed away from tool discussions for a, a many number of years on my my site um, mm. for for various reasons. But but one of them is uh, if I'm advertising different tools, and you know, and I get money, a small pocket change from ads, I'm not going to yeah. be blasting the same people who uh, I'm advertising, right? No, that Nor would be of, not a good idea, <laughs> right? Um, and, and not that I would want to either, really, no. but. Uh, you know, some some topics just aren't very fruitful, and I'm not I'm not so into tools that I want to go all like polemical about them. But um, mm. just even like when somebody's struggling, let's say somebody is like really overwhelmed, you know, uh, a good post would be supportive and, and like a response. It would be supportive, and you know, have you tried this that? Whereas maybe a more blunt post would be, yeah, maybe maybe this isn't the right field for you, right? But mm. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to attach my name to some kind of blunt statement about that. No. So, I don't know. I, I honestly, I kind of think on the whole, anonymity is a bad thing. Probably like for the internet mm. as a whole, right? it encourages trolls. It encourages people to be less responsible. And and I really do like the back and forth interactions on Slack because it allows people to get more clarification in real time. Whereas these these forum posts are just like one-offs and then and then threads below it um so and and you know while because this is a write the docs podcast i think it is mm. a good time to sort of celebrate the success of the online community with write the docs there is no yeah. livelier place to get information to kind of have rapport with online colleagues to feel part of a community than write the docs slack and this is something that the stc has completely missed the boat on I mean, the SEC yeah. still kind of um, operating in this 19... In the 90s. Yeah, the 90s model where you have people yep. go meet at a, at a Denny's in a back room to kind of have a meeting. And those meetings are depressing. You, you, you get like a small handful of people, uh, half of whom are the leadership. The other half are, are newbies looking for jobs. And like the other half, the others are people who just go to any, any function because they've been doing it for years. Uh, whereas online, like you can... You can have conversations with people at exciting companies. You can have, um, you know, you, it's easier to get access to the right people for the relevant discussions that you want. Okay, so I think we're probably getting towards the uh, the end of the show, and it's gone really quickly, hasn't it, uh, folks? Uh, <laughs> so because uh, there's been lots and lots of uh, you know, very interesting questions about Reddit. I'll tell you what, you know, I've got a lot of work to do after this podcast. <laughs> so. Um, Let's round out the show with, I think, this last question, and that is all about um, what motivates you to actually participate in in Reddit and if you want to go a little bit larger online communities in general, Alan. For me, it's I you know I when I started out in the career in this in this field, I didn't really have a lot of support. I was an STC member at the time and I got a lot of value at that point from I was on the Lone Riders uh, mailing list. That was real valuable to me. I got a lot of help from some really senior people who had a lot of experience that I just didn't have and wasn't going to get working as a Lone Rider at the time. Uh, so I this lets me give back a little bit. There are and I'm kind of I'm someone who I like to think a lot about, you know, what I do. I like to think about, I don't just come in, oh, let's write some stuff. I'm going to go home and not really think much more about it. Mm. You know, when I'm at work, I think, okay, how do I do this better? You know, I just did this thing, but yeah, I really could have done that differently. And so I've kind of spent time thinking about how to do the work, what works best. I notice what does or doesn't work. And if I can maybe help someone with that, you know, have you, Hey, have you thought about doing it this way? Have you given an idea to doing this thing? And you know, that comes with experience. That comes with age. You know, mm -hmm. So if I can help out a little bit like that, 
you know, it gives me, you know, I, I get to give back a little bit, you know, to this. What about you, Tom? What do you reckon motivates you to to participate in online communities of various flavors? Well, you know, this podcast has made me really think about the comparisons between the Reddit subforum and and the Write the Docs Slack. Mm. And I think um however you participate, it helps you feel a little bit more connected to the profession. Like you're you're participating in a in an active conversation. You know, whereas, uh, you know, if you, if you don't ever participate in anything related to the profession, it's sort of, uh, it, it might lead to feeling bored by it and not as engaged. So it's a way to kind of stay engaged um, with things. And I do think there are a lot of lurkers. For every person that comments, there's probably uh, quite a number of people who have the same comment but just don't feel like participating. Mm. And and just getting that getting a few posts out like replies out maybe gets people more accustomed to it but also maybe um understanding the etiquette of of the place as well is really helpful like just how the technology works for example on on slack with write the docs if you really want to get people people's attention you you put their their handle there and then they're going to get a notification like even understanding that right is is helpful or on the Reddit forum, you can if even if you don't want to comment, you can upvote, you can downvote, uh, yeah. you know, and that that influences things. Um, but overall, there's like the people who commu- who participate in these communities do so because I think it helps us feel part of of something, part of a profession, part of an active group, and uh, you know, that's that's beneficial. I, I, I think that's that's also true. I mean, I really agree with that too, and the fact that. You know, I've, well, you know, for, in my, again, in my case, I've always been a lone rider. Um, and my joke has always been, um, you know, the reason I don't talk about what I do very much is because unless you do what I do, what I do is really freaking boring. I mean, for me, for me, for, for me, I mean, I love what I do. I, I think it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. I enjoy my career. I enjoy the little minutia of if I change this point size by point eight, what's that going to do to my letting and what's that going to do, you know? I can do this all day. This is great. Mm. I enjoy what I'm doing much more than anything else I've ever done in my life. But it's really hard to have that conversation with someone who doesn't do that. So it's yeah. really nice you know, on the right, the doc slack, I, I, you know, on the right, the doc slack, a lot of times I'm, I, I read through and I'm like, wow, I never would have thought of that. Or this yeah. person does something completely, we're both technical writers, but this person's job is completely different than my job. So it's a re, you know it's mm. really interesting to read you know to hear what they do and how they do it, and that I can't get you know anywhere else. And it's kind of the same with Reddit. You know, it's these are people who are try either do what I do or trying to do what I do, so you can talk about it a little bit in a way you just couldn't do normally. And, the thing and, I like about go, oh, go so ahead, no Tom. no go ahead go ahead. The thing I like about um, I guess participating online is that. Um, it, it does, there, there's a lot of, uh, ways that you can actually burn down your own imposter syndrome by participating and commenting. Um, and yeah, there was a time when, you know, I was, uh, sort of going back into, uh, technical writing from the gig at Ladbrokes being a product manager. And I had a massive case of imposter syndrome getting back into technical writing because it was like a year and a half had gone by and I wasn't really actively doing tech writing. And that was a long year and a half in the space of like trends and stuff happening in technical writing. So I was, yeah, I was feeling really, really quite uh, disconnected from the career. But, you know, getting back into Write the Docs again and just reawakening the technical writing centers in my brain and going, yeah, I remember I can do that. And, oh, yeah, I can, I can help people with that thing because I remembered how to do that from, you know, my time at Red Hat. That was actually really, really important for me at that time because it actually helped me regain my confidence slowly um and get me back to where i am now where you know I'm, I'm fully fully into it again so you know that's another good thing about being um on forums and you know even if you're lurking and you're looking at posts and you're answering that internally and not actually putting yourself out there that's still beneficial for your mental health so you know that's a really positive thing about what online communities can do they can they can help bolster your self-confidence a bit more because you can go, yeah, I know this. I've got this. This is fine. You know? Yeah. 
I think a lot of people also are curious to know what's new, like what's the latest news in the space mm -hmm. I'm in, the professional space I'm in. Uh, people often like, I don't know, over LinkedIn, they'll say, hey, Tom, how's it going? You know, what's the latest going on in API docs or something? Mm. And I'm like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. Like, you want me to tell you the latest stuff? <laughs> Where do like, I start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, there's people who, it, especially with Slack, you can choose the channel you're interested in. And you yeah. visit it because you kind of want to know, like, what is going on yeah. in API docs? You know, somebody released some new tool or there's a conference here or uh, there's a, a trend here with a certain approach. You know, it's it's yeah. a way to stay engaged professionally. And um, I, I sometimes meet people who are completely sort of offline as much as one can be offline. In other words, they don't participate in, in Slack or other spaces. They don't you know seem to read journals or anything. And I just have to wonder, like, uh, the profession, how does, it, how does it stay interesting to you without any kind of engagement? So um, it's definitely these channels are I could not have done this job as long as I had without a community like Write the Docs always keeping me engaged, going, oh, this is a new shiny thing. Oh, that's a new shiny thing. Let's check that out. And constantly, like, you know, wanting to actually learn just that little bit more about the aspects of technical writing. Um, and, you know, you find out things like podcasts are really cool to listen to and stuff like that. Like there's so many different aspects of things that you find on online communities that broaden your horizon as a person and as a professional that I think you're mad if you don't, even if you even if all you do is lurk. It, I mean, that's very true. I mean, for me, it's real important to me to be good at my job. Mm. I don't I don't I do because I live in Metro Atlanta. I have a 90 mile a day round trip commute. Ooh. Uh I'm up at, I'm up at, I'm up at five. I would, you would have to put a one or more in front of my salary for me to live close to where I work. Cause I live right. in sort of the really expensive high tech, uh, suburbs north of Atlanta, where's where I work at. And mm -hmm. it's, it's about, it's a, you know, on, on my cell, you know, just all by myself. That's kind of hard to do, but you know, I don't drive to work every day and spend, you know, my time at work and then thinking, you know, just, to sort of be okay at my job. You know, I want to be mm. good at my job. I want to understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing. Uh, and that's how you keep up with a lot of this is by these online communities, like with the write the doc mm. Slack, um, more so than far more so than Reddit. Reddit again is sort of an, a newbie space uh, with some experienced mm. people commenting, but on the write the doc Slack, I read through some of the posts. I'm like, that's an interesting tool. And Oh, wait, Oh, that person actually wrote that tool. Okay, that's why they can speak yeah. authoritatively about it. Now let me go to their website and oh, that's really nifty, you know. And uh -huh. I may not be, I may never be able to put it in place at work, but now I've expanded, you know, my knowledge of things, and I just and I want to keep building on that. And there's no way to do that. You can't just isolate yourself. I, I, like you said, I don't see how people. You would be so completely bored at your job. You would never ever do anything new. I don't understand people can yeah. do that. You, you know, one, you know, the other one, thing too. Oh, the sorry, other thing ahead, too is like, and they, I'll, I'll let you have your question. So the the other thing that's really useful about these online communities is you, you just never know when you're going to need that little bit of information that you found interesting at some point. Yeah. And being exposed to it, like at least you have a recollection in your memory about, hey, I seem to remember someone on Write the Docs said that. Um, and you know, I, I would recommend that if you're, if you are listening to this podcast for the first time and you haven't used write the docs slack, don't rely on the scroll back and write the docs, you export some of these links into a Google keep or some sort of Apple notes because the slack monster will eat the history. But and if quickly. you do that and very quickly, because it's a very active community, you're quite right. Um, Alan, so, you know, make sure you save these little tidbits of information because there's a high chance. And I have had this happen to me in my career where you go. Oh yeah, that that really cool post that somebody shared. Yeah, I'm going to use that now. <laughs> like yeah. Vale, for example, and linting and stuff like that. That gets covered I, a fair bit on there. I really you want know. to get into that. Yeah, I would love to put that together if I could ever get the time. I, and I found out yeah. about it. I think through a post on the Write the Doc Slack. I'm like, that's yeah. really freaking cool. I need cool. that. Tom, what were you going to say? <clears throat> Sorry, I, I don't want to end on a controversial note, but. Oh, come I can't. On. I can't help myself. I feel like there's. <laughs> I feel like there's one community, one demographic that really should be more present. Like I would love to see them more present, but they're really not as much. And maybe I'm wrong, 
Mm. But I would like to see more of the academic community on at least Write the Doc Slack um, mm. engaging in some things. Like I want to know what people are researching and like yeah. what 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 are they thinking about. At one time on Twitter, I searched for all people who who are like uh, PhDs in tech common rhetoric types type programs because mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I want to totally like get on the end to know what the academic community in tech com is discussing. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take long before I realized that like tech com in the academic settings means things much, much broader than uh, technical writing. In fact, technical writing is sort of rarely covered. Uh, mm -hmm. People are much more interested in like the rhetoric of of uh, color in uh, political discussions or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, right. Things that are, things that are more theory based. But I would love to see more of the academic community just engage on write the doc Slack and and have that that uh, exchange. So there's a person on Reddit who, uh, if you look at uh, her profile, is a professor of techcom at a uh, university in Texas and she posts uh, now and again and it's kind of interesting to, but you're right kind of interesting to see that you know here's someone with a PhD in this who teaches this and that it, it but you're right it would be nice to see that community uh, engage a little more outside of what happens in academia they need yeah. to become part of the documentarian community because they they do they are documentarians. They they are passionate about what they do and and communicating the information that that takes a lot of work to assemble. And we saw that in episode twenty five, where Andrew Head came on the show and shared with them all the information about you know how they what they learned about API documentation, tooling side of things. Like that was incredibly rich and incredibly interesting from a research perspective. You know. We can do with more of that type of discord in our technical writer online communities for sure, Tom, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, that brings us to the end of Write the Docs episode 26 and what a jam-packed show it was. It has gone a little bit over time, so apologies for that, folks. If you're listening to this on commute and you have to pause it while you actually go <laughs> to work. Um, but look, that uh, that uh, brings it to an end. And um, what a cracker of a show it was. I had to, sorry, I had to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, so let's talk about ways. If you, if something in this show piqued your interest and you want to know more about it, or you just want to come and chat to, to Andrew and Tom and I on Write the Docs, you can do that really easily. Um, you can come and join us on Write the Docs Slack forum. Um, and you can jump into the podcast channel and uh, give us feedback about the show or any of the shows you listen to. We'd love to hear when people actually listen to the podcast and actually take things away from it and what they learn from it. So come on in and actually tell us what you learn from the show. And more importantly, if you have something that you think the, uh, the Write the Docs community would be interested in learning more about, then please come and contact us and talk about um, the subjects you want to cover because Write the Docs podcast is, after all, um, for the community. So we want to hear community voices on the podcast and, and hear what you have to share um, uh, about being a documentarian in the various industries you're in. So come on board and tell us some stuff. It'd be awesome. Um, of course, you can always... Um, Find all past episodes of um, Write the Docs podcast on podcast.writethedocs.org. Uh, and um, you can also download past episodes and get episode summaries um, from the um, the main page there as well. Uh, so come and interact and tell us, uh, tell us how we've done or tell us some ex interesting things that we need to cover in uh, upcoming shows. But yeah, above all, interact. So thanks again, Andrew, for coming on. Um, no, sorry, not Andrew. <laughs> Thanks again, <laughs> Alan. I had, had the wrong face coming up. Yeah, Alan, thank you for coming on. It's been wonderful having you on to chat about online communities and, and Reddit. I've learned a lot um, from the show. Thank you guys for inviting time. me. Yeah, thank yeah, you very much great. for inviting me about this. This was really interesting and a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, thanks, to, as always, Tom, for coming on the show and um, and uh, and for your work assembling the questions for this one, because uh, I hey. must admit I was totally phoning it in. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> yeah, that was great. A really good cross section of questions there. So, folks, as always, we ran out the show with the um, the mantra of write the docs, which is docs or it didn't happen. Have a wonderful break, everyone.